then uh, we're going to, uh, as I said last week, and this will be a, a two-part uh, a series of the gospel, part two. And again, I would like to say, what is the gospel? The good news of Jesus to all of us that really need it. It is everything Jesus has said, taught, and did for the benefit of all of mankind through the Word of God. It is the offer of salvation for people who believe and who obey God to the best of their ability. But moreover than that, it is about our personal relationship with our Savior. It is also in developing the deepest of love and respect for God and our fellow man. It is to shift the focus from self to others. To place God first and to treat everyone as good as you would treat yourself. 1 John 4 and verse 16, if you have your Bibles turned there. 1 John 4, 16. Read the uh, New International Version. It says, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is Love. Yes, he is. Whoever lives in whoever lives in love lives in God, mm -hmm. and God in them. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. God lives in you if you live in love. We are learning that love is the beginning and the end, and everything in between. To guide us and direct us in everything we say and do. We also learn that our emotions has nothing to do with our ability to love. Doing what is right supersedes any emotional pull or ties on the matter. Truly it does. For us, obedience to God expresses the highest form of love that we can express to him. That our pounding hearts and those good and fuzzy feelings, or warm and fuzzy feelings, could never deliver. So that brings us to where we are now. And as the Bible teaches us, we're going to turn there too, we are living in perilous times. Perilous times. Turn with me to 2 Timothy. Yeah. 2 Timothy 3. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 5. It says, as he was, Paul was talking to Timothy, you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times, for people will only love themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. 
They will be unloving and unforgiving. Mm. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. Mm -hmm. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. And as he, he put it, stay away from people like that. And that rather describes our state of affairs right now. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. First Thessalonians 4 kind of kind of puts a puts a light on it. First Thessalonians 4 and verse 13. First Thessalonians. Oh, I'm sorry. I was over in Timothy. <laughs> First Thessalonians 4 and verse 13. And it says, And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to believers who have died so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again. We also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. So in other words, also God is saying he does not want us to be ignorant of these things. And of all the things that is going on around us. He said being ignorant concerning those that are falling asleep. A lot of people got misconceptions about that. Uh, got misinformation about that. Some people just believe what they are told since it may come from a pulpit instead of researching it and reading it for themselves out of their own Bible. But here in the truth and the light that is not so. So as God's people in these perilous times and what is called the end time, we will be saved out of this world that will soon enter into judgment for all the sins mankind has and will continue to commit. We have seen it ourselves in our own Bible studies, especially the last two Bible studies we have had, just how close we are as a nation and the financial or catastrophic financial crisis that is upon us and will happen in which we will not fully recover from. And if we do somewhat, it will only be on a partial basis unless our nation and our leaders lead us to repentance. Amen. Amen. In the meantime, the nation needs to know what God is talking about. What has gotten him so upset that he's ready to take us out. Mm -hmm. That means he has gotten a belly full mm -hmm. of our shenanigans, individually and collectively as a nation. Mm -hmm. yes. But this does not concern his people in that matter. Right. Yeah. Not that we're entering into judgment. We have another job to do. Because he has now saved us out. When mm -hmm. we've accepted him mm -hmm. as our personal Lord and Savior. Amen. And has promised to obey him with everything that is within us. And he knows our weaknesses. Yes, he, 
He doesn't expect for us to be walking on water the minute we say we accept you, Lord, is our personal Savior. He knows if we take a foot out there, we're going to drown. Yes. <laughs> but in the meantime, and in between time, it is a process. We're going to grow more and more. Our hearts are going to be more and more towards him. We're going to be inclined to do less wrongdoing than we did before. Amen. And every time we do something wrong, it's going to hurt us. Yes. We're going to be convicted of it. We're going to feel bad about it. And, and, and we don't want that feeling again. That's right. And we're going to repent. We're going to, that means to turn around and go the other way. Because we want to be on the same page with him. That's right. Amen. We want to walk down that same path with him, arm and arm. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says in Hosea 4 and verse 6, Hosea 4 and verse 6, he said, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Right. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will reject you from being priests for me. Or anything else. Because you have forgotten the law of your God. Mm -hmm. I will also forget your children. Yes. Now the New Living Translation says it best. He said my people are being destroyed. Because they do not know me. Mm -hmm. Since your priests refuse to know me. Somebody is not teaching something. That's right. I refuse to recognize you as my priest then. Since you have forgotten the laws of your God, I will forget to bless your children. That's pretty strong stuff. Mm -hmm. You say, I am so sick of you. I'm, I'm sick of your kids too. Amen. <laughs> and if that don't get your attention, some things we as parents, we can relate to that. We can take stuff where we sure don't want our kids to go through. Amen. And sometimes our kids go through it anyway yes. because the knucklehead slips. Yes. Yes. But we try to prevent them. We always want them to have a better life Amen. than us. Yes. That's, that's all of our goals. That's what we feel from the beginning mm -hmm. when they first come into this world. But we as a people have slipped so far away from God and his truth that as a nation, we can no longer discern between the word of God and the lie of the devil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you this and you know it for yourself. Turn with me to Romans 1. Romans 1. Starting in verse 24. So God abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their hearts desire. As a result, they did vile and degrading things with each other's bodies. They traded the truth about God for a lie. They worship and serve the things God created instead of the creator himself. Who is worthy of eternal praise? Amen. That is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even women turned against the natural way to have sex and instead indulged in sex with each other. And the men, instead of having normal sexual relations with women burn with lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men. And as a result of this sin, they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserved. And that's coming. That's coming. And this is the way that you know it. Now that which was shameful is now forefront. And those now that mention and say that it is wrong and shameful now are criticized as being wrong as two left shoes. Yes. They have traded the truth of God for the lie. Mm -hmm. And so now it is to the point, and you can see it for yourself, God has 
given them over to their debased minds and allowed them to think it. They're going full force, marriage equality, and all that other kind of nonsense against the natural behavior of every living thing on this planet. And only a human being has the capability of doing that. Even an animal is smart, is smart enough to know to leave well enough alone. So here we are. Even the simple fundamentals of the Ten Commandments has been either totally disregarded or so twisted and satanically mo uh, uh, modified that many think it is okay to do all kinds of wrongdoing mm -hmm. unless they get caught. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Steal, cheat, kill, everything. And even when they do get caught, if they got enough money and legal resources, they will not, they will not have to pay the consequences thereof. They can find loopholes to get out of it. You got folks that has determined those that are poor should remain so. Even those that are poor and that we have the ability to help them, that they have even placed, put laws in place not to help them so much. Consequently, the food stamp program that they wish to cut $40 billion out of from starving people. Can you imagine that? So in other words, they're telling you they're poor and hungry. Then they make the excuse, well, they're poor and hungry because they want to be poor and hungry. Because they're too lazy to get up off the couch and go find a job. That may be true for some, but you can't take that little 5 or 10% and put that label on everyone and make everyone suffer. That's not godly. The ways of God was to always take care of the poor. Yes. Even yes. if you had a farm, you couldn't take everything and harvest everything. You had to leave some for the poor. That's right. You always had to do something for the widows and the orphans. Amen. Amen. It's always been like that. Not like it is now. That they put faces and almost skin colors on who is poor. Mm -hmm. And they said, they're out to cheat you. And they're on Wall Street as they go up and up with their prices, as they send jobs away so they can take advantage and exploit other poor nations with cheap labor and materials and bring the same products back here to sell for an inflated price, and they said that's okay. <laughs> but this is what God is upset about. He is very upset about it. He's about ready to tear this playhouse down. Mm -hmm. And the way he has always got our attention is through your pocketbook. That's right. You'll listen to that when you won't listen to nothing else. It'll make you change your tune about a whole lot of things. You might be hating one minute, and, and, and when it comes to money, you might be deeply in love. <laughs> <laughs> So, where do we come in as Christians? Where do we come in as Christians? And this is for us, truth and the light. Isaiah 58, verse 1. But when I read this, but there is a method to doing this, because sometimes we like the latter than the other. And I'll explain that in a minute. Isaiah 58, verse 1. It says, cry loud, spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. That's right. That's what God says we're to do as his people. It is two ways to accomplish. There are several ways to, to accomplish that command. Living it first, then saying it. If we are living the word of God, then it will back up what you say. It will make our witness more powerful. Everything is in place to bring our nation and the world 
to its knees. It is in place. The man of sin that's going to come on the scene. The world is right there at the brink for him to step in. Our hero. And those of us that is not with God is going to get fooled. God says, Jesus said, that in the end, the very elect could be fooled if they could be fooled. That means if you're close to God, you will not be fooled. And that's why we are teaching this today, so you won't get caught unaware. And this is what, what happens. The nation must know what is wrong and what they're doing wrong before calamity comes. God is not a God that comes and strikes you down the minute you have done something wrong. But if you continue to do it, and then you increase in its intensity, you are going to really get his attention. Mm -hmm. And so he does not want you to completely destroy yourself, so he might have to come in and touch you up a bit. Mm -hmm. For your sake. Yes. Not because he's sitting back there looking for an excuse to do something mm -hmm. to you. He doesn't need one. No. But he loves us, and he wants us to do good. He wants us to do good to one another. Yeah. He hates when we do things bad to one another, right. when we lie to one another, when we cheat one another, when we use one another just to be using them. Yeah. He doesn't like that. That's not, that's not going along with him. And he always, and he wants us, and he takes his time with us. To teach us step by step, going along the way, how we can be good, loving, kind-hearted people. That reflects him. Yes. That reflects him. The other stuff reflects you know who.
And the old man of sin is going to have the answer. And those that live outside of God is going to go for that answer because their belly is going to be hungry and empty and their pockets are going to be turned inside out. So they're going to welcome that so-called mark of the beast. Let me have it. I'll put it on myself. But not God's true people because they know better. Our job as Christians is to be a light unto this ever-darkening world. To be salt of the earth. To give seasoning to a tasteless mankind. We must tell people to repent. And it's just not the fire and the brimstone kind. There are many ways to tell people that they need to repent of wrongdoing and their wrong thinking. Especially their thinking because you're going to think it before you do it. Our behavior as Christians, and the blessings that we receive from our Lord and Savior, from God, because of our faith and our obedience, both in our kindness, in deed, and in speech, people can determine what kind of Christians you are right away. What flows out of your mouth and how you act, and especially if they knew you before. If, you, if your talk is the same, and your actions are still the same, then that means you have not changed. That's the worst thing you can tell for, to a Christian, you ain't changed a bit. Amen. You ain't changed a bit. You're the same old so-and-so you brought me. Maybe you worse. You're still doing the same thing, putting up with the same thing, saying the same thing, doing the same dirt. But yet you stuck up in the church house somewhere. Hallelujah. I was like hallelujah for the next supper. Just like we have dear truth and light, as I challenge myself and you to practice being nice for 21 days. This is the, the greatest display and preaching of gospel you can ever say out of your mouth. It's by how you treat people. How we treat one another. I know one thing, it's working in my house. So the next challenge for the next 21 days, let's be nicer. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> really going to stick. <laughs> but I don't know, 21 days, I might slip out. <laughs> Preach. So we continue to be nice. It's it's so pleasant around the around the home when folks are nice to each other. Yeah. <laughs> and when you're nice in your house, you know that that's that it's that spills out when you leave outside the door. Being nice to folks. And when you're nice to people, boy, you feel good. Mm -hmm. I know I do. Yes, yes. I feel good. I feel the chest stuck out a little bit. Not being on the puffed up side, but hey, I was nice to that person. <laughs> you know, you feel a little godly. Because that's the way Jesus was. Jesus wasn't bad to folks. He didn't embarrass folks. He didn't put folks on blast. Sure unless the Pharisees really called down on it. Mm -hmm. But he was always there with a helping hand. And so that's what we need to do. So this is what accomplished if we do so. First, we'll become more Christ-like. And we'll be more believable and trustworthy. And that is truly preaching the gospel to everyone we meet. Because Amen. they get a chance to look at Christ in you. Right. Amen. You are his ambassador. Mm -hmm. And believe you me, when you are like that and you're nice to folks, you're not grafty and greedy and always looking for an angle. People see that. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. And they're gonna want some of that. Yes. They won't they don't mind being like that. And they're gonna ask, what is your secret? How do you do it? And then you can tell them about Jesus. Amen. And how, what he has done for you. Yes. But you can't keep talking about you. Right. That's right. 
you got to let them know how this can affect them in a more positive yeah. way. Yeah. Get them talking. And that is lifting up your voice like a trumpet. Yes. Telling your people all about the times in which they are living in. And everybody knows this is not good times. No one is, 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 is that insane. Even the very wealthy know that these, these are not very good times. Amen. Even though they may be raking in more profits than they had before, but they know this is not good. Because they look all around you. You look all around you, you see all the injustice. Mm -hmm. You see young men being gunned down by those that yeah. have sworn to protect them. And then there is no justice. They're not even held accountable for it. They told job well done. And what that's telling everybody. That Satan is behind that because he wants us fighting against each other, not with each other. He doesn't want us to focus in on him. He wants us to focus in on everybody else. And that's the way it is in this country. Pull yourself up by your own bootstraps but I'm going to hide the bootstraps. Mm -hmm. And then we can also tell folks how God is not pleased the way we're living. And then we can also tell them about the warning, what will happen if you continue to live that way. And part of it is so folks can be without an excuse when it comes down. Amen. So in the end, you will have a, a, a foundation of understanding. Mm -hmm. You will say, boy, you know what? That Christian over there told me that. Mm -hmm. But I was too hard-headed to listen. I thought my thing was going on real smooth. And that, that's not going to affect me. But it's going to affect everyone. No one escapes. And how they can avoid the catastrophe and live a wonderful life right here, right now. Amen. Yes, you can. If they would just repent and turn the other way. Repent of their sins. And everybody's got them. Even this country's got them. And it's a tall order for them to repent of theirs. It's a tall order for them to reconstruct their financial institution where it will be fair for everyone. This is what God wants. And I don't think they're going to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't think the billionaire is going to say, well, you know what, I'm going to pay you a decent wage mm -hmm. and I'm going to give you medical insurance for you and your family yes. that you could uh, go see the doctor, any doctor that you choose, no matter what you have. And then you're going to make a, a decent wage where you can have your, your home and your automobile, transportation yes. and food. And you won't be in debt for no more than seven years. That you will be free. Of course, you, uh, the houses won't be costing two, three, four hundred thousand dollars. They'll be more like what they was before, seven and ten thousand dollars. Now those same houses is four hundred thousand dollars. That is greed. That you think God appreciates that? And you think, well, he has blessed me to do this, so I, no, you have did that yourself by hooking and crooking and following the ways of the devil. Yes. That's what you have done. And you gather in more than you and your family in several lifetimes could ever spend, and yet you want more. And there's another man sitting there just wanting a slice of bread. Yes. And you say, well, I won't give it to him because I don't think he's going to work for it. <laughs> and so it's a whole attitude that has to change. And if it doesn't change, then, then God must enter into judgment because he said so. And he will keep his word. Mm -hmm. But if this nation would repent, we don't, as a nation, will not have to go through that. That's right. The rest of the world is going to go through it, but you won't. But they won't give it up. They don't want to be nice to you and I. Mm -hmm. They want to continue to do their own thing. It's whatever they have cooked up, them and Satan has cooked up in their minds. But I, one of our main 
course of actions for us to do as Christians and in this world is to help those that are being called now. Yeah. It's to yeah. guide and direct those that God is calling to be first fruits now. Yeah. And this is extremely important because new babes in Christ look to those that is already there. Wow. First Peter 2 and verse 2 said, like newborn babies, Pray pure spiritual milk so that by you, you may grow up in your salvation. That means to nurture and to feed them until they can gain proper uh, spiritual nourishment. Amen. So they can stand by themselves on the word of God. Yes. Everyone needs a teacher. Everyone needs help. Mm -hmm. And especially new Christians. And they look to us how we act and behave, and they will mimic that good, yes. bad, and different. Yes. So God says we we got to be nice. Amen. We need to always be on our best yes. behavior. That don't mean you don't have to. Uh, uh, you can still uh, laugh and talk and tell jokes and have a good time. He is not that God as some have portrayed him to be. All stiff and and not liking to having a good time, not having a celebration. I tell you what, back in the days in old Israel, they looked for any excuse to have a celebration, Amen. and they brought out the party, and they did it for days. Amen. Yes, they did, and it's the same here. But now they made Christianity so unattractive to so many folks by saying you got to stop this, you got to stop that, and it's not sin. It is somebody's personal, personal development, somebody's personal behavior that he has placed in there on his own and put the name of God on it. Yes, he did. And people go for it because they don't read. They like it to be read to them. You know, I guess in, in, in other words, they're like little children. Yes. You know how mm -hmm. kids love to have a story read to them? Mm -hmm. And those are stories. Usually those stories out of some fairy tale book. <laughs> it ain't true no way. <laughs> so they turn the Bible into a fairy tale. And if you ain't reading right along with it, you're going for it. That's right. <laughs> but God says you, everybody needs to study to show themselves approved. Amen. That you can rightly discern the word of God and the word of truth. Don't let nobody just tell you the truth and you can't check it out for yourself. That's what you need to do. And this is what we have been called to do. This is our preaching of the gospel. Amen. Not only in, in words, but more so in deeds. Amen. And that brings, if you're going to bring somebody to Christ, if God is calling someone, and God will usually take one of his Christians, whether you know it or not. I've been there, done that. And I've messed up too. And it was like God taking his face from me. And I prayed and prayed, give me another chance. Give me another shot. <laughs> because sometimes you don't realize and you out there, you ain't thinking about nothing. And, and then you you uh, mistreat somebody, you don't, don't treat them right, and just turn them completely off. <laughs> you don't want that. You don't want that. I know each and every Christian here does not want that. You want everybody in this world to be saved. Mm -hmm. But un unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. But what we can do, make ourselves available for those who it will happen for, mm -hmm. whom God is calling right now to be yes. first fruits. Mm -hmm. There'll be some other fruits, but it's nothing like the first picking. Mm -hmm. So let us keep busy being Loving and kind-hearted so that the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will go out unhindered, without spot, and without blemish. Amen? Amen. Amen.